What's up guys, Stoby and Reacts here, back with another video. Today we're out some Auto Vibe Bismarck and Man of Great Ideas, extra issue 2. We already did part 1 on our channel, if you want, if you ain't looked at that video, please go look at it right now. And if you ain't, subscribe to the channel guys, please subscribe. We need subscribers guys. And, uh, we see y'all watching the video, man. Yeah, we see y'all watching the video guys, so if you uh, have any other videos you want us to react to, or any other things, please give us, uh, hit us in the comments and tell us. And please like up the video, guys. Without further ado, let's get into the video. 1848, the people's spring, springtime of nations, the year of revolution. Bismarck's political life ended nearly as abruptly as it started. For as the summer of 1847 began, the king, unable to get a railroad grant from the Diet without also granting a constitution, threw his hands up in the air, dissolved the Diet, and sent everybody packing. Bismarck went back home to his estate, finally completed that whole business of getting married, and went on his honeymoon. But as he traveled Europe, and when he returned home, he noticed a strange tension in the air, an unrest in the streets, in the cities. Then, in February 1848, Paris erupted. The monarchy fell. A republic was re-established in France. Bismarck was concerned. At home and abroad, he had seen the strain between the working... So Bismarck was a part of the king, so he'd rather be ruled by the king than being a democracy. Yeah, so, that's, so that's what got him worried. Oh. class and those who ruled, but he never expected something so abrupt or so successful to happen in France. Then Vienna fell. Metternich, the great Austrian statesman and architect of the Concert of Europe, was displaced. This opened up an opportunity, as the Austrians had long been the dominant force among German states, but it also served as a warning. It was clear that revolution was coming to Prussia soon. But Bismarck worried that the king was too weak and too vacillating to put down a revolution. And he was right. As word of the revolution in Vienna spread, Prussians took to the streets, and soon the king promised them a constitutional government. But as the people were celebrating their victory in Berlin, the celebration turned into a clash. Shots were fired. Government troops killed revolutionaries. Many, including Bismarck, believed that now there was no choice but to... <laughs> I ain't be funny, but it's just, that's just the animated style, huh? Yeah. It's the animation style, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, but at least he followed what he believed in, even though the follow wasn't right. Had no choice but the, uh, he had no choice but the, uh, he had no choice but the, uh, fight back after what happened, because, you know, when the people fight back, you know, it's just, it's just another thing when the people fight back, so, you know, when they fight back, and the people killed them, like he had no choice after that. He had no choice. In my opinion, you know, he had no choice. So ain't no choice. Crush the revolution. The king, though, disagreed and ordered the troops out of Berlin, effectively leaving himself hostage to the revolution. And then came the first of Bismarck's good ish ideas. He raced back to his estate and organized an old school peasant levy. Yes, in the middle of the 19th century, he tried to press his peasants into service as their feudal lord in order to put down a revolution whose stated goals were to enfranchise and empower those same peasants. With this great idea in mind, he handed them all shotguns and said, Come on, lads, to Berlin! But just as they were storming off, one of his spoilsport neighbors came out and told him to stop hurling a firebrand into the country, threatening to talk the peasants out of this nonsense. Bismarck politely replied, You know that I am a quiet man, but if you do that, I shall shoot you. So with revolver in hand this dude, and... This dude was just... Yeah, he, nobody could stop him once he put his mind through something. You gotta give him that. Bro said, if you... I'm a quiet man, but if you do that, he will shoot you, bro. Who says he really that? Really believes this? <laughs> he did not want the um, king to fall. No, the king, bro. If he sent the soldiers out. Yeah. Four, yes, four bullets in his pocket, he led his feudal levy to go liberate the king. 
Unfortunately, when he got to the first army camp, which was staffed by many of the conservative officers that he had come to mingle with after making his fiery speeches in Berlin, he was promptly told, Yes, we are all a bit disappointed right now, but no, we really don't want your peasant mob messing this up even more, so how about you go send your peasants back and bring us some corn and potatoes or something? Not content to serve as mere fodder provider for the army, Otto then had his second good-ish idea. He left his estate and tried to sneak into Berlin again, with the cleverest of ruses, trimming his beard. Needless to say, many people saw through his incredible mind games, and soon he was laughed out of Berlin. But Bismarck was not done. So he, he put dirt on his, he made a, no, they say he chunked his beard. So what is this right here then? I don't know. I, well, they said, I thought he was just put a fake beard on. He had a third good-ish idea. With the king making ever greater concessions to the revolutionaries, Bismarck saw it as his place to help elevate one of the king's relatives to the throne. So Bismarck went all in on trying to replace King Frederick Wilhelm with a confusingly but more succinctly named King Wilhelm. But Wilhelm had legged it to England, and he wasn't going to listen to this wild man anyway. So Bismarck began to hunt for a new candidate. Soon he found another royal relative named Charles, who proposed that his even more confusingly named son, Frederick Wilhelm, should replace Frederick Wilhelm on the throne. This Frederick Wilhelm, or Fritz, I'm gonna call him Fritz, was six years old. But nobody had asked Fritz's mom. I mean, they eventually did, but more as an afterthought, with Bismarck awkwardly meeting her in her servants' quarters. So they gonna keep replacing Frederick Wilhelm with another Frederick Wilhelm? They didn't replace him, he was just looking to see who would replace him. So they just often had the same name? Yes. I guess. <laughs> you gotta ask the mom, but it's too late now. Not asking turned out to be a mistake, though, because Fritz's mom supported the liberals and put the kibosh on the whole thing. It would seem that Bismarck had made an enemy of the mother of this six-year-old he hoped to put on the throne. Nonetheless, he was soon summoned for the second Prussian Diet, which the king had ordered a symbol to hammer out how to make a real parliament for Prussia. There, Bismarck spoke passionately about the noble past that they were so casually throwing away, even becoming choked with emotion and having to stop mid-speech. But to no avail. The Diet did its job and created the Prussian National Assembly, which Bismarck was very not elected to. This Prussian National Assembly pushed for a real parliamentary system along British lines, though, and soon the king began to lose patience with the body. So Bismarck joined the Camarilla, which was not, in fact, a secret society of vampires which has kept their presence hidden from humanity for hundreds of years, though I can understand your confusion, and let's be honest, Bismarck would have made a great vampire, but no. Bismarck joined the much more boring but real group of nobles and courtiers close to the king who were determined to maintain the power of the monarchy through non-vampiric means. And let's go ahead and call this one Bismarck's first actual good idea, because Enlisted is the free, brand new online World War II shooter. Command a squad of soldiers and participate in legendary battles of the Second World War, right now. This put him in contact with many powerful men. But even though, by all accounts, he was an effective member of the society, and even though he had amplified the conservative voice in Prussian politics by establishing a newspaper, when the liberal cause fell apart and the conservatives once again became ascendant, he was passed over for a cabinet position. They were very happy to use him when a radical was needed, but once the time came to reestablish, so they were they, using him for fighting and stuff. They were using him for the the talk to the lower end people. No, I think they said when they needed somebody like they when they need him when they needed somebody they needed the radicals take care of. They used him. Yeah, the fight people and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Establish order. The wild man was cast aside. So Bismarck returned to his estate to witness the birth of his first child. But Bismarck had a plan. Bismarck always had a plan. You see, even though the liberals had failed to get anything like the constitution they had wanted, they had gotten a constitution, and with it, a parliament, the Landtag. And Bismarck, always a pragmatist under whatever colors he may have worn, decided to get himself elected to this new body. The fight was fierce. He knew that he wouldn't get elected in his own region, so he decided to run for office in the city of Brandenburg. But there, he was an outsider, running against the local mayor. That's a smart idea, going to a different, uh, different uh, village and running for theirs, in case, you know, because people didn't like him in his videos already, so that was very smart on his end. 
But as they say, you know, he was already running against the person, a local mayor that's already there. So, you know, I don't know how that's how all that gonna play out. So, you know. He acted with vigor, describing his campaign headquarters as a military camp, with messengers running in and out at all hours, and strategy being formulated so that he never missed an opportunity to speak to the few hundred men who would eventually determine the representative for Brandenburg. He won by 25 votes. Now he was once again at the center of things, and the question at hand on everybody's mind was the unification of Germany. If the 39 German states that had survived the Napoleonic invasion banded together, they could change the face of European politics forever. But how to achieve that was a matter of some debate. They could either come together under Austria or under Prussia. But Austria rejected the possibility of unification, because the Austro-Hungarian Empire and the Habsburg-inherited lands included far more territory than just the German portions. And the whole point of unification was German nationalism. Germans would never accept rule by a sovereign who was also ruling over other nations. This meant that the Austrians would either have to divide their empire and give some other branch of the family their German territories, or simply reject unification outright. And they chose the latter. The German National Assembly, which was different from the Landtag in that it represented all German states, decided, with little other choice, to offer the imperial crown to Frederick Wilhelm. Nobles in the Landtag, including Bismarck, urged him to accept. But the I want to know that some of the people, you know, behind the scenes did want him to be king, but they had no choice at the I'm end. Pretty sure it's, it happens today. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, yeah. always have them type of people. King rejected the proposal, and this allowed Bismarck the opportunity to rail against the constitution that would have come with it. He was blasted by the press, and sure of losing his seat in the next election. But when the king dissolved the Landtag, he changed the election rules for the next session in ways that favored landowners like Bismarck, which ensured his re-election. After giving some blistering speeches on the role of the monarchy, and some strong invectives against even the monarch's own move toward a constitutional unification, Bismarck got himself moved to the new assembly debating the question of unification. But before that could go anywhere, he got caught up in the next great conflict. The war over territory seemed to loom between Austria and Prussia, and it is here that we see the evolution of Bismarck. Because though in many ways he was, and always would be, a man of war, when a settlement was offered, and many pushed to reject it and go to war instead, Bismarck rose and said, It is unworthy of a great state to fight for something which does not concern its own interest. Gentlemen, show me an objective worthy of war, and I will- That's a good thing to have that you, you a general and you still the, don't want to fight over little things that have Germany fight over little things. Yeah, if it ain't benefiting his own country, well, I'll go yeah, either way. Yeah, so, yeah. I get what he's coming from right there. And like, don't, I won't get in because it ain't benefiting me in no way. Probably to create more death and chaos for me. Yeah, we'll, we'll, too. we'll go along with you. It is easy enough for a statesman to ride the popular wave from the comfort of his own fireside, making thunderous speeches from the rostrum, letting the public sound the trumpets of war, and leaving it to the musketeer, bleeding out his life's blood in the snowy wastes to settle whether policies end in glory or in failure. Nothing is simpler, but woe to any statesman who, at such a time, fails to find a cause of war which will stand up to scrutiny once the fighting is over. And so begins the transformation of Bismarck the Radical to Bismarck, man of royal politique. Well, I think about Otto von Bismarck is in this episode where he played modern politics right now because you know he played the game. He played both sides. He played both sides. A so he, yeah, a little bit until he got what he wanted, and at the end he really did get what he wanted. So, hey, credit to him. What you think? Well, I, feel, well, I second your opinion. I mean. Yeah, I just think it did. Really, not too much. He just, he just, he was a modern day politician in the era before us. Yeah, yeah, and a great military mind. So we're gonna see what he do in the next episode of uh, th uh, three. If you ain't watched episode one, please go watch that video. And if and uh, please hit the subscribe gun, subscribe button, guys. You know, it's a percentage of y'all not striving to watch the video, so you please hit the subscribe button for us. And come in on the comment section what videos you want for us to watch next. And hit that like button for us, guys. Uh, get us, we get our videos out there. Uh, without further ado, we are out.